Because probably never in all of history has a law that benefited so few been in existence so long yet negatively impacted so many, right? So many Americans are worse off as a result of the Jones Act. And there's a very small group who are better off, yet the Jones Act has endured for 100 years because of, of politics. And this is why the founding fathers were so you know, worried about democracy. And they called them factions, and they were worried about exactly what's happened. Because the problem politically with the Jones Acts is that everybody suffers a little bit. I mean, some Americans suffer more than others. People living in Puerto Rico, like I am, or people that live in Hawaii, or people that live in Alaska, they suffer more from the Jones Act than people that live in other states. But certainly anybody who lives uh, on the eastern or western seaboards, they're suffering. Uh, the whole country suffers to some extent. But nobody really knows that their suffering is due to the Jones Act. And they don't really know how much it is. Because all the Jones Act does is it increases shipping costs, right? Which, you know, and everything that we consume has to be shipped somewhere. Either it's shipped to us in a finished form or a lot of the raw materials get shipped around. And so everything we buy costs a little bit more money because shipping costs have been artificially inflated uh, by the Jones Act. Now, who benefits? Well, you have a very small number of people in the shipping industry, which is a tiny industry, which I'm going to get into, but they have an enormous benefit. And the benefits are very clear. And so they are politically motivated to make sure that those benefits um, continue. And, and so, you know, they, they have a lobbying to make sure that the Jones Act is there. Whereas the, the broader population, uh, they, 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 don't, they don't really come together on this issue because for any one person, the issue is not important enough uh, for it to uh, matter. But for the people who benefit, it's all they care about. And, and if you go back to why we had a Jones Act, right? This was 1920 that it was enacted. And the supposed impetus for this was to make sure that we had a good merchant marine in case we we're in a war. Right? that we needed the vessels to supply our troops or maybe even to, to take these uh, ships uh, that were commercial ships and maybe we could use them in the military, right? We could use them in the war. We could call them into service somehow. And so in order to be safer, right, we wanted to have a, a, a big viable merchant marine during peacetime in case we needed them during wartime. Because, you know, we didn't want to be beholden to foreigners, right? I mean, what if we were there was a blockade? I mean, we, we wouldn't want to be vulnerable to depend on having to use foreign ships. So the idea is, hey, let's try to protect our industry from foreign competition so that we'll have a bigger, more vibrant industry uh, just in case we need it, right? So when they, when they passed the Jones Act, there, there's three key provisions of the Jones Act, right? The ships have to be owned by American companies. They have to be built in America, right? With American workers building the ships. And then they have to be crewed by Americans. So there are three important things that the ship needs to, these criteria need to be met before it's allowed to transport any commercial cargo between two US ports, right? So if you're gonna pick up cargo in New York and drop it off in Florida, you gotta do that on a, a Jones Act ship, right? So that's the deal. So anyway, this law has been in effect for 100 years. And what has the effect been? The U.S. shipping industry is virtually non-existent, right? We only have, in America, 98 ships, actual ocean ships, right? The way they're defined, it's you can carry 1,000 tons in the ocean. We only have 98 of them. There are over 53,000. I got the number here, 53,732. I mean, maybe it's more by now, but almost 54,000 ships. America has 98. We have less than one-fifth of 1% 1 of the ships. That's it. We build in this country, our shipping industry, we build about two to three ships per year. That's all we do. China, China builds 4,000 ships a year. 4,000. We build two to three. 
Korea builds 2,300. And I'm not talking about boats because they have other things that they build. I'm talking about these big ships on the ocean. Korea builds 2,300 a year. Japan builds 1,600 ships, right? So those are real industries, building ships. I mean, we do it for a hobby, two to three ships. Turkey, Turkey builds 330 ships per year. Vietnam, Vietnam, 327 ships per year. America, two, three ships. That's the industry that we're protecting. It's ridiculous. We got 98 ships. And, you know, back in the year 2000, we had 193. We have fewer ships. We're destroying the ships because, you know, they become obsolete and they get scrapped. We're not even building enough ships to replace the ships that are scrapped. Back in 1980, we had 250 ships. The industry is dying. And it's the Jones Act that's killing it, right? The government said we're going to protect the shipping industry and they destroyed the shipping industry. In Europe, right, 40% of all the merchandise that is delivered is delivered by ships, 40%. In America, ocean liners, ships in the ocean rather, 2%, 2%, that's it. That's all the cargo that moves in the US by water, by ship. Now, if you include the rivers, right? We have these big rivers and there's barges and stuff going down there. Yeah, then it's about 6%. But if you just look at ships, it's 2%. Oh, and by the way, I meant to mention that you'll read a lot about, you know, that when all the propaganda, the pro Jones Act propaganda, they'll say that there's 40,000 ships in the United States, not 98. Yeah, there's 40,000 if you count all these little teeny ships more than half of those, like 60, 65% of those 40,000 are barges that are on the rivers, you know, like, you know, with hauling garbage and stuff like that. And then you got a bunch of little tugboats in those numbers. So I'm talking about real big ships on the ocean, right? That's the ones that we we, we, uh, we barely have any of. And, and, and so we're not using ships. And th this is how it works. So, so let's say a, uh, a ship comes over and it has merchandise from Europe and it drops it off at a port in New York, right? It can only pick up merchandise in New York if it's destined to go to another foreign country. It can't pick something up in New York and bring it down to Washington or bring it down to North Carolina or bring it down to Florida. Even if it's going down to those ports anyway to drop off stuff, it can't pick up any additional cargo and drop it back off. So that means an American who has stuff he wants to ship down south can't put it on that boat, even though there's empty space. So he's got to hire a truck or he's got to put it on, on a train. And, you know, the most energy efficient, right? If you're trying to reduce your carbon footprint, the most energy efficient way to uh, ship stuff is on a boat, on a ship, especially if the ship is going to go between ports anyway and it's got empty space. You might as well load more cargo on it. It's not going to take any extra energy. It's not going to have any extra emissions if you put more stuff in there. But the U.S. government will not allow uh, any more stuff to be put in there. So as a result of this, everything costs more. You know, if you want to ship oil from the Gulf of Mexico to New England, right, it costs about $6 a barrel to ship it to Canada which is further north, right? So it's more, it's a longer trip. It only costs $2. So it's three times as expensive to shift stuff from uh, the, the Gulf of Mexico to um, uh, New England than it is to ship it all the way north uh, to, uh, to Canada. And so obviously this is uh, hurting American industry. And you know, a lot of times um, Americans are forced to buy products from foreigners as opposed to Americans because it's cheaper to get stuff from foreign sources. That happens all the time in Alaska and Hawaii and in, in Puerto Rico. You know, Puerto Rico, we, we buy rice in Puerto Rico. We buy rice from China, right? Why are we buying Chinese rice? I mean, there's we do have some rice in the United States, but the reality is it's cheaper to bring the rice all the way over here from China than it is to bring it from the United States.